was originally going to put all this information in with lecture 5 but I decided it was just a tad too long for you so uh, with this one we'll just cover the last two elements which is the record keeping and validation and then we'll review some uh, questions and material and then we'll be done you'll be ready to take your exam for a certified HASA professional so here's what my form looks like at the end of the day uh, yours could be different and that's fine you might have come up with some different hazards you might have come up with some different um, critical limits m more critical limits should be different than what I have here but they might be you might have uh, more critical limits and that's fine uh, you might have different ways of monitoring depending on what critical limits you came up with so it, it doesn't matter if it's exactly the same as mine it does matter if uh, you understood what you were doing when you put this together so looking at the receiving now we're trying to fix those hazards norovirus hepatitis listeria etc uh, all those are going to be fixed the same way, right? They're all different bacteria going to be fixed the same way, um, basically. The uh, eggshells and the dirt are both physical hazards, and they'll be fixed basically the same way. So for um, critical control points, the physical was not a uh, critical control point at receiving. For biological, it was. So we set our freezer critical limit at zero or below. They should be received at zero or below for the frozen product, which was the ground beef for the refrigerated products they should be 41 or below for the eggs should be 45 or below I didn't put that in there but uh, it would be wonderful if you did taking the um, how you're going to monitor you're going to take the temperatures of both of those whether they're frozen or refrigerated what's going to be your corrective action if they are not the proper temperature this is at receiving you're going to refuse the product send it back with the vendor are you going to verify that they did that? You're going to review the log at receiving and see if you see some entries. If in the course of six months you never saw an entry or they refused anything, then I guess they don't refuse product. They, they take it and uh, chill it back down to temperature. So look, you would review the receiving log. And uh, what record keeping? So this would be if you ask the uh, receiving, hey, I want to check your. Um, that you refuse, you in fact refuse uh, products if they're not the right temperature. Uh, where would I see that? And they would tell you, oh, that's our receiving log. You know, maybe they call it something different. So that's just where would you record that information? Uh, when you uh, verify, you're going to record that. You verified the information so that you know that they did that. Going back to the prepare step um, for biological hazards, I just put a couple here clean uh, their ha clean hands. Uh, cutting board clean and sanitized keep the product at 41 degrees while while those products are sitting out there keep them at 41 degrees you might say if you can't keep them at 41 degrees how long can you uh, keep them out and, and only keep them out of refrigeration for 30 minutes an hour or whatever uh, how are you going to monitor those well you're going to observe the um, that they wash th their hands that they clean and sanitize the cutting board you can take the temperature of the products to see what the temperature is you could observe how long the product is sitting out there. What's going to be your corrective action would be if the temperature is too high, you might refrigerate it, bring it back down to temperature, and then put it back out. Uh, if you get indication that the people did not uh, wash their hands or did not clean and sanitize the cutting board, you might discard the product. How are you going to verify? How's the HACCP team going to verify that they did that? You're going to take the temperatures and uh, see if uh, in fact they uh, are doing that you can observe to see that they are cleaning their hands that they uh, clean and sanitize the cutting board do they have sanitizer that type of thing and then where would they record that so you're going to record the fact that you uh, verified and they were doing everything or what they were not doing you would put that in typically the prep log or whatever you use for the physical hazards the critical limit is going to be no foreign objects we don't want any dirt in there how are you going to monitor that you would observe you could go uh, right there at the prep table or you could go out to the uh, serving line and see if in fact there's any foreign objects in the food and uh, how would you verify um, don't know why I didn't write that in there but you would verify the same way you would do it through observation where would you write that information again would be the prep log so you would say we uh, 
We verified. We, we the HACCP team, inspected the products. We didn't find any physical uh, hazards in the products. And you would write that on your prep log. And then down to the reheat. Uh, it's not a, f not a critical control point for the physical hazards. For the, the um, biological hazards, the critical limit would be 165. You're going to cook to 165. What's the uh, monitoring? You're going to take the temperature. The corrective action is seen in the oven. So if it's uh, you monitor and it's 162, you're just going to leave it in the oven until it reaches 165. How are you going to verify that? You, um, they should be recording periodically in the log what the temperatures were when they pull food out. Maybe your standard is they record all of them. Um, but a way to verify would be either looking at the log or take the temperature. So as somebody's heading to the serving line with the product they just took out of the oven, uh, hey, let me uh, check that for just a moment, and you take the temperature, and that tells us if they kept it until 165 or not. Where would you record that information? Would be the prep log. And down below I have the standard operating procedures that would probably be in place regarding hand washing, so how to properly wash your hands, how to properly clean and sanitize cutting boards, the receiving standards uh, such as proper temperature, uh, authorized companies, product put away uh, immediately, that type of thing, uh, proper SOPs for thawing the ground beef, uh, SOPs for using uh, first in first out, and the SOP is for getting your vendor guarantees when you receive the product. So that's what mine looks like. Yours should look something similar to that. And that is a hassle plan. Nothing difficult about any of that. Um, but again, don't tell anybody that it's not difficult because they think it is. Therefore, uh, you can get a nice job um, with that hassle of knowledge and putting a hassle plan in place. And you just tell everyone, oh man, it's really hard. Oh boy, I wouldn't suggest you do it all. I'll, I'll do it, you know, <laughs> kind of a thing. That's because people pay for things that are hard, not for things that are easy. Okay, let's uh, get your brains quiz ready, certification ready, actually, with uh, some quiz questions. And then I'll review the terminology that you need to know. And then you should be ready to test. We would certainly hope. We want you to pass and be a certified hazard professional. What's the difference between a control point and a critical control point? Loss of control at the critical control point could lead to an unacceptable health risk. Which of the following would represent a qualitative critical limit? Quality. Qualitative is the one without a number. Free of strong odor would also be uh, the fish does, uh, f the fish gills are red, the eyes are clear. Those would be qualitative critical limits, not a number. Plant audits of vendors are conducted in order to ensure that the vendor is not introducing hazards into your operation. So why do you do audits, which means going out to the plant, looking around, checking their paperwork, is to make sure that they're not going to mess the food up and then send it to you, introducing hazards into your operation. During a weekly physical inventory inspection, you notice a swollen can of corn. That could mean botulism, right? What action should you take? see this as a possible answer, it is always the answer. Follow the procedure outlined in the HACCP plan. This one is not multiple choice. You notice that the temperature log for the meal in progress shows the temperature was 141 degrees for the beef patties, the corn, the potatoes, and the soup. What's the problem and what should you do about that? likelihood of corn and soup being the same temperature is remote. 
So probably they pencil what the uh, temperatures in the medical business we used to say they radioed it. So they probably just wrote down some temperatures because it's just not logical. And what you should do about it is talk to the supervisor and the employee. Make sure the employee knows how to take the temperatures, plus understands the importance of actually taking the temperature, not um, cheating the system. When I found a, uh, a very good operation doing, uh, a one lady was doing this one time, and uh, she was actually cheating them because the temperatures were higher than she wrote. <laughs> if you're going to cheat, write higher temperatures, not lower temperatures than they actually are. And it turned out she was new in that position and just didn't know how to do them. A new item has been added to the menu, and a review of the records reveal continued safety issues with the new items. Based on this, you should modify the product or modify the process. Change the way you're doing it or just get a new product. You must correct the problem. Which of the following would prompt corrective action to be taken? is noticed in a pan of food on the serving line. Keep in mind when we're talking about the HACCP plan, corrective action doesn't mean you corrected the employee, it means you corrected the food item. So when hair is uh, noticed in a pan of food on the serving line, that's what we will be talking about when we talk about corrective actions. Again, not a multiple choice question. A piece of glass is found in prepared chicken salad. What would be the problem with removing the piece of glass and continuing to serve the product? There could be more glass. It's probably safer to discard the product immediately. You're preparing food which will be served tomorrow. What information should be included in the record keeping? vendor guarantees, temperature logs, verification documentation, calibration logs, among others. Those would be just examples. Does the fact that you took a lot of temperatures and they came out right or wrong prove whether anyone got sick from your food or not? So you look at the logs and everything just looks lovely. They recorded the temperatures. They're right. Does that prove anybody got sick or not? What does prove this to the best of our ability is by checking with the local hospital, company health clinic, incident reports. This process is called validation. How do you validate that nobody got sick? You call the local health department, the local medics, the, your health clinic, say, how are we doing? How often do people come down there and say that we um, made them sick? That's called validation. The overall objective of this whole HACCP program is for the organization to produce safe food consistently and reliably and to control known food safety hazards. This is what I've always said. If you don't know the difference between a control point, critical control point, critical limit, control measure and all that, uh, those are the people who fail the test. So just make sure you can put it on pause, make sure you copy all these down, make sure that A, B, C, D, you can pick them out on a, on a test and you know the difference between the uh, various terminology and that'll get you. If you can do, if you can s tell what all these are, then you'll pass the test. You're almost a certified HACCP professional. Now to turn you from an almost one to an actual one, you need to study, review all those uh, notes, review all those terms that I told you to study. Anything that was on my slides that was bold and red or that I went over several times, make sure you know that. 
review pages 1 to 36 in the HACCP implementation manual. I made it nice and skinny, so read them all. <laughs> There's no wasted pages, wasted words on there. I just went from blink, 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 from thing to thing that you need to know. That's the kind of books I like to write. If you don't remember to study, then remember my email address, ed at ehmanly.com, because you'll need that to send me a note and say, hey Ed, how do I retake that test that I just learned that I failed? So let's not do that. Make sure you're prepared, and we'll look forward to your being a certified HACCP professional. God bless, good luck, and see you on our website listed with the certified HACCP professionals.